All right, we're continuing on in learning um, about how to solve trig equations. And this video is going to be talking about um, solving trig equations, again, using the unit circle. But in this case, when you have a period for the function that is something other than 2 pi. So 2 pi is normal. And that's what we practiced before. And today we're going to practice some where the trig equation has a period change. All right. So we're just going to start off by doing examples. Um, so the first example is going to be sine of 2x equals 1 half. So this is a really, really simple example. And if you guys recall, to find the period of a function when we graphed it, we would do 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x. So the period of this function is 2 pi divided by 2, or this equation, I guess you could say, is 2 pi divided by 2, so the period is pi. So normally on the unit circle, we have a period of 2 pi, and that means that on the unit circle, we get two answers. Now this means the period of our graph is pi, and so we're going to get two answers from 0 to pi and then two more answers from pi to 2 pi. So we have twice as many answers as we would normally expect. All right, so I'm going to start off the same way I normally would, where I'm going to do, you know, sine inverse on each side to get rid of the sine, and I'm going to look at my unit circle to see where I have a positive 1 half as the y coordinate, and that happens in two places. It happens at pi 6, and it happens at 5 pi 6. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to show my work as if I'm finding all possible solutions. And this is how we are always going to be doing these problems when there's a period change. So I'm going to say 2x equals pi over 6 plus 2 pi k because that's normal, right? And I still have the 2x. I haven't taken care of that yet. And then I have 2x equals 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. Now at this point, this is where I can do the part where I divide by 2 and I make that period change happen. So I'm going to divide the left side of the equation by 2 and I'm going to divide the right side of the equation by 2. So this means my x is solved for and if I have 1 6 and I divide it by 2, I get 1 12th. So that makes this pi 12th plus and then 2 pi divided by 2 would be what I said before, that the period of the graph is now pi k. So these answers um, are going to repeat every pi k instead of 2 pi k. So if I wanted to find something that was coterminal with this, then I would just be adding pi. All right, so x, and then again I'm going to divide by 2. And I get 5 pi twelfths plus pi k. All right, so if we want to say what all solutions are, this would be our answer to find all possible solutions. If we want to say what the solutions are from 0 to 2 pi, and I'm going to go ahead and do the version that does not include 0 and does include 2 pi just for this video, then I would say 1 12th, pi 12th is my first one. If I take pi twelfths and I add pi to that, that's the same thing as adding 12 twelfths. So 1 twelfth plus 12 twelfths is 13 twelfths. So those are the two answers for the first period of the graph. And then, um, not first period of the graph, but based off the first answer is what I meant. And then over here we have 5 pi twelfths plus 1 pi would be plus 12 twelfths, which is 17 pi twelfths. So that one was pretty easy to do in my head, but if you wanted to do it on a calculator, you could do 1 twelfth plus 1, 13 twelfths, and then you could do 5 twelfths plus 1 and get 17 twelfths. Okay. So let's go ahead and do another problem like that to make sure that it makes sense. 
So this time I'm gonna say that sine of three x equals root three over two. So if I think about the period of the graph this time, it would be two pi thirds. And so that means that instead of having two answers for the first pi and two answers for the second pi, I'm gonna have two answers for the first two pi thirds, two answers for the second two pi thirds, and then two answers for the third two pi thirds. So if you think about the unit circle, two thirds is right here, and then we have another two thirds right here, and another two thirds right here. So I'm gonna have two answers that would be fractions from here, two answers that would be fractions from here, two answers that would be fractions from here. And they might not be fractions that would show up on the unit circle, but they would be values that would fit in that part of the unit circle. Okay, so just like before, I'm gonna think about doing sine inverse on each side, and that's the part that makes me look at my unit circle, is when I'm doing that sine inverse. We just always do it in our head because we're using the unit circle. So I'm looking for a y coordinate that is a positive root three over two, and it happens in these two spots right here, so pi thirds and two pi thirds. And so I'm going to say, for all solutions, I'm gonna say three x equals pi thirds plus two pi k, and three x equals two pi thirds plus two pi k. And I'm gonna go ahead and divide each side by three, and so I get x equals one third divided by three would be one ninth. And then I get plus two pi thirds. So you'll notice that when I do that work of getting the x alone and I divide by the three, that is the moment where I switch this to being um, that period that has changed. But I have to make sure I switch this part too, which is why we do it all at once like that. So again, I'll divide by three, divide by three. So I get x equals two pi ninths plus two pi thirds. And so this is my answer if I'm looking for all possible solutions. If I'm looking for solutions from zero to two pi, then I'm gonna expect three answers from each of these because two pi was broken up into three sections. So I'm gonna do one ninth plus two thirds. I get seven ninths. So pi ninths was the first answer, seven pi ninths was the second answer. I'm gonna go ahead and add two thirds again. 13 ninths is the third answer. Or if you wanted to do this in your head, you could say plus times three times three plus six ninths. So plus six ninths plus six ninths. The other one would be two ninths. And then if I add six ninths to that, that'd be eight ninths. If I add another six ninths, that'd be 14 ninths. And you can see here, if I was to add two thirds again or add six ninths, I'd get 20, nope, I'd get 19 ninths, which is a little bit bigger than two pi. If I added six ninths here, I'd get 20 ninths, which again is a little bit bigger than two pi, which is why we don't keep going. So there is our solutions for what would have been on the unit circle. Okay, so let's try um, one with cos. So I'm gonna say cos of five x equals negative one. And so the period of the graph is gonna be two pi divided by five, so two fifths. Now here you'll kind of notice that um, this is saying we took the unit circle, we divided it in three, and then all three of those sections had three answers. We took the unit circle, we divided it in two, and so each of the two sections had two answers. Um, 
for each of the three sections had two answers. So typically that's how it goes. And the reason for that is anytime you have numbers like this where they show up in two spots on the unit circle, then you could expect those numbers of answers to double. This is one where an X coordinate of negative one only shows up one time on the unit circle. So instead of expecting to find 10 answers, we're really just gonna find five answers because this answer only shows up once. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and think about doing cos inverse. And that's where I look at the unit circle to see where there's an X value of negative one and it only happens once it's at pi. And so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna solve for all solutions first. I'm gonna say five X equals pi plus two pi K. And then I'm gonna go ahead and divide by five on each side. So X equals pi fifths plus two pi fifths K. So there's my answer for all solutions. If I wanted my answers for zero to two pi, then I'd say my first one is one fifth, plus two fifths would be three fifths, plus another two fifths would be five fifths, which is pi, plus another two fifths would be seven fifths, plus another two fifths would be nine fifths. And then I wouldn't go any further than that because plus another two fifths would be 11 fifths, and that's bigger than two pi, so I don't want that answer. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a tangent problem. So we're gonna say tan of three X equals negative one. Um, this is like the one scenario where I think the tangent ones are a little bit easier, and that's because if you guys recall, their answers repeat every pi k and so you don't actually have to look at both places on the unit circle that it's going to equal that number you just have to look at one of them you only have to solve half the problem basically so um, let me go ahead and continue working on this problem and these I know I'm giving you um, some explanation that maybe doesn't make sense right now and I'll continue to explain it as we practice these in class because some of these you have to see them before you start to understand it a little bit better. Um, so here we're doing tan inverse, we're looking at the unit circle, we're trying to find a y coordinate divided by an x coordinate that simplifies to be negative one. And one of those places is right here. And then the other place is over here. So we have three pi fourths and seven pi fourths. It does not matter which one you use, okay? It does not matter which one you use. You're gonna get the same answers either way. So instead of me saying, I'm gonna have three pi fourths plus two pi K because the answers repeat this way and repeat this way and repeat this way, and a second answer of seven pi fourths plus two pi plus two pi plus two pi. Instead of having two scenarios, I'm just gonna choose one or the other of these, and then I'm gonna say the answer repeats plus pi, plus pi, plus pi, plus pi, plus pi. So I'm gonna do one set of solutions instead of two. I'm gonna go ahead and use seven pi fourths because I wanna show you guys something. So I'm gonna say that to solve for all solutions, I'm gonna do three X equals seven pi fourths plus pi K. Right. So over here I can still do the same work to show you the period of the graph. Since the period of a tangent graph is pi, we would do pi divided by 3 to get pi thirds for this one. All right, so here I'm going to go ahead and divide by 3 and divide by 3. So I get x equals 7 pi fourths divided by 3, I'm thinking of the bottoms kind of multiplying, so that'd be 7 pi twelfths, and then that's plus pi thirds, okay? And so if I want to go ahead, this is my all solutions answer. If I want to find all the answers from 0 to 2 pi, then I'm gonna do 7 twelfths plus 1 third, and I'm gonna do that repeatedly until I have enough answers from zero to two pi. So I've got 
seven twelfths. I'm gonna go ahead and add one third. Okay, so we had seven twelfths. We had eleven twelfths. We have five fourths. We have nineteen twelfths. And then we have 23 twelfths. So if I look at this, I do not want to add um, a third again, because if I do, I get 9 fourths, which is bigger than 2 pi, because 9 divided by 4 is 2.25. But if I look here, I only have five answers, and I kind of expected to have six. And the reason I only have five is because there is an answer that's smaller than 7 twelfths. So you do want to think about repeatedly adding this number, but you can also subtract it and see if there's a smaller angle that should have been included. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 7 twelfths and I'm gonna subtract 1 third. So 7 twelfths minus 1 third. And I would say that it's not very often that you end up having one that's a little bit smaller and for that reason, students usually miss it if that's the situation. So just be careful. So one of the patterns that we'll notice is that when we're looking at problems um, where the x or the y coordinate is something that shows up twice, then we can always double. Whatever the coefficient of x is, we can double that number, and that tells us how many answers we should have. If it's on the quadrant line and it's where x is 1 or negative 1, y is 1 or negative 1, in those situations then we would say that there's only exactly the number of the coefficient for the answers. So typically when you see that coefficient, a coefficient of 3 typically means you're going to have 6 answers. A coefficient of 5 would typically mean you're going to have 10 answers. Okay, let's do um, a couple more. I want to show you guys problems where there's an extra inside step to do. So in these problems, we were looking at steps. Well, there weren't really. There was just one inside step. Now we're going to look at one that has two inside steps. Okay, so we're going to start off kind of the same way. We're going to do tan inverse. Tan inverse. And so I'm going to say 2x minus pi over 4 equals, and I'm looking at my unit circle to see where the y divided by x equals positive 1. Again, it can be pi fourths or 5 pi fourths. I'm going to use this one so I can practice finding the smaller angle. So I, don't, so I remember not to forget it. So I'm going to have 2x minus pi fourths equals 5 pi fourths plus pi k, because with tangent, I only have to do one equation. I don't have to do two, since the answers repeat every pi k. So to solve for x, I'm going to think about the steps that I normally do to solve for x, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and just add it to the other side. So I'm going to get 2x equals 5 pi fourths plus 1 pi fourth is going to be 6 pi fourths plus pi k. So I'll go ahead and simplify that. 2x equals 3 pi halves plus pi k. Okay, so now I can go ahead and divide by 2 and divide by 2. And so I'm going to get x equals 3 pi fourths. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 pi fourths fourths plus pi halves k. So this represents every possible solution I could get. And if I want to look at my solutions from 0 to 2 pi, then I can say 3 pi fourths. And if I'm adding 1 half, that's the same as adding 2 fourths. So 3 pi fourths plus 2 fourths is 5 pi fourths, plus 2 fourths is 7 pi fourths, 
plus two fourths would be nine fourths. That's too big. So like I was saying before, I only have three answers. Because this is a two X, I expect to have four answers. And so that means that if it doesn't get any bigger, it must have been smaller. So if I subtract two fourths, then I just get pi fourths in the front. And there's my four answers.